Hi, Estherita. How are you doing today? Good, Lyric. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. How is today going for you so far? Today's a good day. That's good? Today's good. You know, I, I find I have to start out with a little bit of a routine in the morning and see if I can stick to it. Usually falls apart by 11 a.m., but I get a good two hours in there, you know? That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And what happens the rest of the day after 11 a.m.? It depends. Things seem to pop up that need to be taken care of that you don't expect, either via email or phone calls or, or whatever. Um, this morning I woke up and I, I had all of my food on the dining room table, all the canned goods, and I got tired of looking at it because I felt like I was in uh, God knows where. <laughs> so I went to the basement, cleaned off all my shelves and took all the food down there and have a bare dining room table. And mentally it just makes me feel a little bit more open and clear. Yeah, clearing space in your environment helps you clear space in your head. Right, right. Good. So where are you located? I'm uh, right outside of New York City, actually. Hmm. <laughs> and, and how is it going there? Well, I'm in the okay? suburbs, but uh, it's pretty quiet here. You know, there's not too many people out and about. And I am totally hunkered down. I'm not going anywhere uh, except for walks in the area by You're myself. Good. But um, I'm just staying in here making masks as fast as I can. There are a few nurses in New York City who need them, and I'm getting them to those nurses. But uh, also trying to get some of my work done, too, in between, just for the break. Which, uh, what are you working on now? Um, I'm, I'm, I was working on a series of 20 um, car logos for a couple of solo shows I have coming up. I've got one coming to Visions and to Quilt National. No, no, not Quilt National. National Quilt Museum in Paducah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I started these, uh, the smaller pieces, the logos, about five, six weeks ago when I was away in paradise in Hawaii. And I brought them home to finish them and quilt them. So I'm, I'm just finishing them up, which is something I can mentally do. I think to create something original or just have inspiration is really hard for me right now with everything going on. So if I can finish something I've already started, I, I can get a handle on that and get a little control. But That's a really good coping mechanism. I'm thinking of the list. I actually inventoried everything for probably only the second time in 30 years that I've been quilting and made a list of all the things that like, okay, I actually want to finish this because I haven't been able to create anything either. But I also haven't thought of going and finishing stuff. But, you know, I have one that all it needs is like a quarter of the binding sewn down. Otherwise, it's finished. You know, and just haven't been interested enough. You, you know, to I, do it, so I should do it. We got to give ourselves a break. This is a really impossibly unusual time. And I think there's a word called Weltschmerz, which means world Weltschmerz, world hurt. Well, hurt I think that's what we're all going through now and it's kind of hard to admit to it and uh, ingest it and, and just let it be for a little while because we can't pretend that it's not going on though we can kind of fight toward making things get a little control in our lives by making something or cooking something or changing our bed sheets you know that's a major accomplishment right uh, me anyway so, right. uh, I think sometimes we need to give ourselves permission to feel the fear and the, um, <laughs> I call it the COVID anxiety. <laughs> um, and like I, I always have felt like I, I need to lift other people. I need to um, help other people. It's, it's the mom thing, right? Um, and be strong for other people, but I think if we don't allow ourselves to acknowledge and feel the negative emotions that we have, you know, don't try not to wallow or anything, but um, you can't move through them unless you go through them. If you just stop them, they'll build up to a point. And at the same time, I feel guilty for feeling this way because I'm sitting here in comfort. Um, the weather's beautiful. Nobody's sick in my family. Um, we have jobs, you know, so um, I give myself a percentage of the day 
to fall apart. <laughs> and, then I, and then I pull it together. As school teachers, most of us, um, I, I would imagine all of our work has dried up, you know, all the places we're supposed oh, yeah. to teach and so forth. So, you know, all the plans, you know, what is it? God laughs at you when you make plans or you make plans and God laughs. But I had all these years <laughs> to teach and they're not there anymore. It's like, oh, well, I'm here and I, I've got food and I'm healthy. I cannot complain. Yeah. Are you okay? Are you going to make it without those gigs? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Make it tight. Yeah, make it one way or the other. We make it. And I have family. We all have each other. Right. Right. I talked to my oldest daughter um, a couple days ago and she's, I mean, she's home, but she was working for a university and they're still paying her. Um, mm -hmm. And things are messy because she was supposed to move this week to a new apartment. Yeah. You know, so just, Everything is just a giant big mess. Um, I'd hate to be in real estate right now. And um, and I was telling her, you know what? You don't have to worry about anything in the long run because you can always land back here. You and your husband are welcome to come stay. You know, it's not ideal for anybody, but you have a place to land. Um, so, yeah, worry, but not, you know, it's not and the end of the world. The amazing thing is, um, I, I didn't really know my neighbors all that well, a lot of them. I'm getting to know them a lot better, and we're really relying on each other and passing yeah. helping tips and, you know, oh, I know this guy who'll do that for you. And it's really nice. It kind of makes me feel like we're going back in time to a little bit of a kinder time. And it's, it's heartwarming. That's wonderful. I think I also feel lucky that I live in a neighborhood where it's really outgoing and really active as a community. In fact, that's why we bought in this area because I was taking a walk in the neighborhood and people were waving <laughs> as they drove by in the car. I go, okay, <laughs> I like it. People acknowledge each other's presence here. It's good. It's good. <sighs> so... How are you reaching out to your community? Um, so how are you staying in touch with your neighbors? Do you have an email list or are you talking to each other across windows? You know, I live alone and I'm here. I don't know if you've noticed that at all, but um, my neighbor across the street, every time she goes food shopping, she calls me if I need anything or I'll mm -hmm. go for a walk and I'll, I'll stop and talk to people I've never spoken to before with a good 12 feet with, with between us. And it's just really nice to, to be warm to people and have them be warm back. It, right. it feels good. Do you yeah. feel that's kind of warmed up? I know the first week we were staying at home, even in my neighborhood, as I passed people, you know, crossing the street to pass people, that everybody was like scowling. We weren't quite sure how to interact, and, you know, whether we were supposed to show our fear of each other or... Um, but we've warmed up. Now we, now we stop and chat from across the street. I do have one concern that I'm sure will be fine. My son and his wife are having their first child, my first grandchild, next week. Oh. Which is going to be the apex of um, everything happening in New York. And it's going to be right in the middle of New York City at the hospital. Oh. Just get, send your prayers, if you will, who, who's ever out there and just... What, however you do that, uh, we'd appreciate all the prayers we can get for a good, healthy, beautiful baby and healthy parents. We will do that, definitely. Um, all the prayers and healing and safety in my heart to your beautiful son and daughter. So let's we'll oh. see the baby on uh, FaceTime or Zoom. Yeah. So that which I could never have imagined before, not rushing over there and, and holding the baby. But different mm -hmm. times. It know. is, for sure. Yeah. Um, what has been the hardest thing for you? I guess that. Um, mm, obviously, um, of course. Watching the news. Yeah. I mean, watching the news is the hardest thing. But that's... That's life. It's what's going on now. So I've been trying to limit the amount of time I watch the news. I don't, you know, in the beginning, I sat in front of the news all the time or had it on while I was working. But now I know that there's uh, unhealthy doses. Yeah. And time to take a break because you're going to get the same news every day. It's just a little bit worse each day. 
right. but um, I, I've, I've been working on um, some pieces here that, um, um, fresh no, yeah, this is um, uh, one of the pieces oh, cool. that's going to go together with this one. This is all painted on parchment paper. Uh-huh. And what I do is I put Misty Fuse on it, and you can see this is a piece of organza with Misty Fuse on it, and this is um, how it comes off. The Misty Fuse lifts the paint off the, um, the parchment paper, and then once it's on there, I put it on batting. I touched my face, sorry. <laughs> and put them all together on batting, and I quilt it. So I've got about uh, eight of these logos. I've got a few more here. And I've been having fun with them because they're a manageable size, you know? Yeah. They're, they're not too big that I can't quilt them in a day or two. Uh, the painting part, I don't care how long I spend on it because that's the part I love. I just love anything with paint and brushes and um, just really enjoy doing it. So this really, it, it takes my mind completely off of what's going on all around me when I'm just doing my own work. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, that's fun. That's great. Where did you, did you take all the photos yourself? Oh, I had, uh, I watched uh, Sunday morning, uh, the C CBS news program, mm -hmm. and I saw this um, one segment, I tape it, and it was this guy who went down to this uh, old car place down in Georgia, and he took all these photographs, and I thought, oh my God, that, you know, I, I started taking photos off my TV. So I called him, I called up uh, CBS, and I wanted to get his information to use the photos. And I got his phone number and his email, but he never replied to either one. Mm. So what, I can't use the photos without permission. So I got on a plane, and I flew down to, to Atlanta, rented a car, and went to the old car lot. And I just had a wonderful time taking photographs of all these cars. I think I took about 800 photographs. Oh, how fun. Behind me, I don't know if you could see this one. With the oh. nest in it. Uh, yeah, that one is called um, Eggs on a Grill. So what was special about this old car lot? that you had to fly all the way down to Georgia. You'd think there'd be junkyards closer by. <laughs> this is like a museum outside. And oh, yeah. Down these paths, there's about seven miles of paths, and there are about 6,000 cars all lined up along the path that you can um, it, get on any angle and take photographs from the, the uh, like 1915 all the way up to the 60s, I'd say. Yeah, roughly. Uh-huh. It just, I, I was in heaven, total that heaven. so cool. These photos. And you have to pay to get in, you know, uh -huh. photography, you pay a little more, but who cares? And it was just, um, I, in fact, I went twice. I was teaching up at Kentucky Quilts, which I'll be teaching there, hopefully, in um, early August. Mm -hmm. I'll go to Atlanta, rent a car, go take photos of the trucks, and then go up to uh, teach there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it just, you know, sometimes you find something that so turns you on and so excites you and you just, you have to express it in an art form. And it's not often that it happens. It's very rare that you can really plug into something that, that brings you alive. I don't, I think it's because here are, here are all these man-made objects that are out in, in the woods or at, out in nature okay. and overtaken by weeds and by trees and by scrub and they're falling apart all over again but they're becoming art they're becoming one with nature so you have trees coming through um the grills you have it, it, it's just so beautiful the way nature overtakes it you and, remember the name of the place uh it's called old car city i gotta put it on my bucket list yeah, yeah. so it's, it's a cool place it's in the middle of nowhere you know? oh, fun. That sounds yeah. so much fun. I have been to three or four car museums in the past couple of years, you know, and who knew? Um, and our art museum has actually had two car um, art shows, one about the history of Porsche and one that was um, art deco vehicles. And you would not believe the thousands of photos of cars 
that I have um, in files. And they're just the, I mean, and these ones are pristine because they're in museums. Um, but just the forms and the design and, and amazing. And then looking at yours where you see them go to nature. It's yeah. just, they're beautiful. It's the ultimate recycling, I think. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. With that way. But yeah, just it was really, there's a whole long story that goes along with it, how I actually got down there, but we don't have time for that right now. <laughs> so no, no, we don't. <laughs> we have, I like to keep these short enough for my attention span, <laughs> which is really short these days. Go figure. Who knows why? No reason. Who knows? Um, so what, what thing would you like to say to um, your people and... Um, advice that you might have to give? You know, this sounds so corny and it's such a platitude and it drove me crazy when I was driving, when I was growing up, driving up, growing up. My mother always said to me, darling, this too shall pass. And I used to think, oh God, if I hear that one more time, but she was right. It will pass mm -hmm. sooner than later. Yeah, did you see, what's the movie where he says, it will all be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's okay. our version of that. And, and it's true. Time will pass. There's no other way to look at it, really. You know, otherwise, we're going to make ourselves absolutely crazy. And our health can't take it. Stress is just very bad for the immune system. And we have enough stress going on or enough challenges with the immune system as it is, so we just have to do the best we can. Right, right, good. And are you making masks for yourself? So the CDC just last night, this is Saturday, right? Can't even keep track of the days anymore. Um, came out with the recommendation that everybody wear masks. So I sent out a note to my family and said, who, who among you? And of course, all of them. So today, got production line going. I've been making lots of masks for hospital workers, but I'll get these ones made for my family before I go back. 30. I've been making them with a little slit in them where you put a filter inside. Mm -hmm. And I got one of these um, corrugated, uh, accordion folded filters for air conditioner. Yep. I pulled it out. I didn't realize that it had a little bit of fiber in it. I don't know if it's fiberglass or what. I should have been wearing my mask. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I took this um, uh, this filter out and I ironed it flat. I put some parchment on it to iron it because you can't put an iron directly on it. Right, it'll melt. I use that to put inside the mask as a filter because it's a HEPA filter. Okay. And I, with a tight batik, it'll it'll keep that in there and the fibers won't come out. I hope. Right, good for my family. I'm making. Um, so up on my website, I've posted to the top of my blog the. Easy mask tutorial, the more complicated mask tutorial that has a slot to put a filter in, mm -hmm. and all the all the information I've gathered. So anybody who don't send me another text <laughs> saying, what do you want? What should I do? And I just so I, I put it all up on my blog so that I can just send back one text instead of a hundred words and say, look here. Um, so at lyriccanard.com, there's a blog post um, pinned to the top with video tutorials and patterns and, and all kinds of stuff. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's something. Right? Every little, it, it's, it's not an N95. And if you have them, all of you, not US Street, <laughs> if you have them, bring them to the healthcare workers. We, they need them so much. Um, but yeah, every little bit helps. It's better to have something than nothing because if we all do the something, all the small things add up. Absolutely. Just doing our part. That's all. Right. And stay home. Stay home. If because we love each other. Yes. Yes. Really important. Good. Well, Estrita, it has been amazingly delightful. You're you're always one of those lights to my soul whenever we come across our each other's paths when we're teaching or see each other so thank you so much for taking time to chat with all of our people you take care and everybody out there stay safe stay healthy and stay home <laughs> ditto to that bye-bye bye take care